So my name is Brock Zevan. I'm a life coach, business coach, real estate agent, and a dad. Today, I, I wanted to go back. Christian brings brought this up a while ago. And I wanted to bring up, I do like boxing as well. How many of you have heard about the boys club or girls club like back in the day? Did anybody go to the, those those associations? I was big into that. My parents used to take my brother and I and we used to go to that. They drop us off on Saturdays and there was a boxing ring that was there. And I remember it to a T. I didn't really know anything about boxing, except I remember just putting gloves on. And we just started boxing around with people. I used to box my brother all the time. And I was able at, at, I actually got pretty good at boxing. And I would get my nose busted in the majority of the time. And I remember when my nose would get hit, like something would come over me and I would get like all fired up and then I would just attack the person. And so boxing became more and more involved with me in my life. And my, my dad was big into boxing and we used to watch him and, you know, the Mike Tysons and the George Foremans and all those old uh, Joe Frazier, we, Muhammad Ali, like we would watch them. But Christian brought this up, hey, Katie, Christian would brought this up and he says that I 100% agree that boxing is an individualized sport. Would you all agree with me? Give me a thumbs up that boxing literally is an individualized sport. You literally train by yourself. Yes, there's people around, but there's like, it's just you. Okay. It is just you in the boxing world. And so I, when I was a school teacher, I actually started to study some of the boxers and one of the boxers that I studied with you, and he's going to be our pretend speaker today. Okay. He can't speak because he, he passed away, but he, he died in 1974, but some of you might've heard of James J. Bredick. Okay. James James Bredick was one of seven kids back in the early, he was born in 1905. And why I like this story and Rob and I used to teach PE and health. And so why I like this story so much was because he was an individual, like they were going through the Great Depression and he was going through a lot of challenges. And, and why this story relates to is I want you to think about what's going on in your life. I want you to think about what's happening in it because we're all individual. Unless, I mean, unless there's somebody else behind me that I'm pretty sure there's nobody else behind me who is paying my bills, who is telling me to get up early, who is telling me to do whatever it is I need to do, or they're saying, hey, Brock, here's some money for you. I just feel bad for you. Like there's nobody else in here. And just like him, he had nobody else. So when in 1923, he entered into the boxing ring. Okay. He's one of seven kids. I'm one of five. And so I resonated with that. I was like, wow, he had a lot of kids. Lot, there's probably not a lot of money in the family. Like kid parents aren't just dishing out money. Okay. And at, at the age of 21, he started to take on boxing to another level, Claudia. And what happened, Chris, is he took the boxing and he had a record of 44 and two and two. Okay. 44 and two at a very, very young age. Five years later in 1928, he lost his title fight. Okay. Now, I want us to think about something in our lives right now where things were going really, really well. Maybe 07 and 08 for those of us in the entrepreneurship world and the real estate lending world. 07, 08 was a very challenging time. We were killing it just like last year, crushing it, making a lot of money, a lot of deals. Talk to many people. Brock, I really didn't prospect because it just came to me. I didn't have to do that, right? I had a great lunch with Chris the other day. We were talking about that. In and, and he in 1928, he lost the fight and everything left him. He lost it all. He went down a dark hole. And how many of us right now in the great in a great depression, he was going, we don't even, I mean, we could say the Great Depression now, blah, 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 but nothing compared to what it was back then. Right? So in 1928, he loses. How many of us might feel like we're losing? How many of us might be feeling depressed right now and we're not too sure where to go? And damn, it doesn't look good. I talked to somebody last night on one of my coaching and he was like, Brock, I got to figure out something. I need now money. I, got my, I lost three deals in my pipeline. Nothing's coming in. And I got Christmas, January, and I got kids. I'm like, damn, okay, all right, let's, let's think about this. 
right? And then what happens is he broke his hand. He's a fighter. He broke his hand. I don't know about you guys, but do you think you need your hands when you're boxing? Okay. It's like trying to do real estate without a computer and a phone. I really don't think if you're trying to be and you're in the entrepreneurship world and you don't have a phone or a computer or internet, I'm pretty sure you're going to be like, damn, what do I do? What do I do? Okay. So since he broke his hand, he's, you know, he's a go-getter. He's strong. He fought 33 more fights. Remember, he was 44 and two, fought 33 more fights. He ended up having a record of 11, 20 and two. Okay. How many of us feel right now we're on a downward swing? You don't have to answer the question. This is just for you yourself thinking about this. How many of you are like, damn, the real estate market, all of every distraction, every single thing, the inflation's going up, the rates might be going up, Christmas is here, my credit cards are high, how am I going to pay gifts? All this stuff is going on. Gas prices are supposed to go back up. Holy smokes, what am I going to do? Taxes in a couple months? But we're going to keep going, right? We're going to keep doing it. We're going to keep the same plan because we inside of our head sometimes don't think that, that, that we should change plans. So that's what James Braddock did. He kept going. Well, the depression hit. Well, guess what happened? He had to leave the boxing world. So here he is on high as a kite, 44 and two, and now he has to leave the boxing world because now he has kids. He has kids in his life. And for those who have kids in our lives, our freaking life changes drastically. Whether you want to agree with me or not, it changes drastically. And what happens is he had to go work the docks. Now, remember, I told you he broke his hand, his fighting hand. So they were looking for people who can go really fast, who can are strong people. You're on the you're on the docks. You got to work hard. And he needed to he needed to have money for his family. Well, some days he couldn't work because his hand was so much in pain that they said, we're not going to have you work. His kids started to realize that. So then his kids started to take it in their own manner. And now they're stealing from people. They're stealing food. Now, how many of you like it when you go to work and you're working all day and bad things happen? Then you go home, you got bad things at home not really fun like damn i got bad at home bad at work bad everything i'm depressed i got no money like things start to mount up think of the tetris game when the when this blocks are like going up going up going up going up i'm like oh i'm running out of room game over right so these situations start to take place with us stephanie and so all of a sudden Something takes place to him in 1933 and something for you will take place for you. If you keep on working and doing what you're supposed to do, stay around like-minded people, have conversations with people you want to have conversations with. Cause in 1933, something happened to James. He was inspired by a Catholic worker movement that helped poor people. And he was like, Wait a minute, what do you guys do? Because he didn't even want to take money from the government. He had to humble himself, put his ego down, and he had to start taking money from the government because he had no money and his family was stealing. And so he had to support them. So he started to get a drive. He says, you know what? I'm going to pay back this money that people gave me. I'm tired of feeling sorry for myself. And hopefully something inside of you is triggering you today. Be like, you know what? I can really feel bad for myself. I know I could be like, well, the market and, and all this stuff, and I can't control this. And nobody's picking up the phone. I've tried to call people, Brock. I've called Fizbo's and expires. Brock, I really try to call a lot of real estate agents for coffee. They don't want it. They just tell me blah, blah, blah. Right? How many of you have started to hear that song's getting cheer? Give me a thumbs up if you started to hear negativity across the room, across the board of everything, that everything just seems to be going in a freaking down the toilet. Right? Now, in 1934, something took place. And I want you to think about 2023. 2023, something could take place. Okay? And in 2020, 20, in 2023, the same thing that happened to him in 1934, he says, you know what? I'm going to start a comeback. I'm going to start a comeback. He took his negativity of his hand. People didn't know this. Oh, my hand. Oh, I broke. I can't use it. You know what he started to do? He, farted, he started to be a freaking badass with his left hand. And he became really strong with his left hand. The comeback kid, Robin. He started to be really good with his left hand. His right hand, he couldn't use. His right hand eventually got better, but he made his left hand so strong and he didn't tell anybody. Why is that? It's because he started to strategize. 
Just like you right now, you're going to start to strategize your life, what you got going on. He started to strategize his left hand and he started to come back and take on fights, but he didn't show him the left hand yet because he knew he knew he wanted a match at the title and he was going to show it at the title. So he fought, he fought his normal way. He did everything he needed to do with his right hand and he was doing it, jabbing, going right, left, right, left, but never showed the strength of his left hand until 1934. On June 13th, a guy by the name of Max Bear had a choice to fight who he wanted to fight because he was the champion. So he chose James Reddick or James Braddock. And he chose him because he was going to be a 10 to 1 underdog and he could be an easy fight and he didn't have to train very hard. Here's the problem for all of you right now. What is your purpose and what is your why? Because you're going to go up against a champion. You're going to go up against a life. You're going to go up things you can't control. And you got to have a strategy and you got to have that secret element. And he said, you know what? I'm going to take that fight, Max. And it was $250,000 purse at the time. That's big time money back in the 1930s. So in 1935, on June 13th, he was a 10 to 1 underdog. And he went to the Madison Square Garden. And on the Madison Square Garden, guess what he pulled out? Good old lefty. And he freaking beat him. And he beat him good. And he shocked the world that day because his why, his purpose, his growth for his kids, his strategy. It didn't, did it happen on June 13th, 1935? Who would agree with me that it didn't happen on June 13th, 1935? It happened in 1933. Give me a thumbs up, give me a heart. Give me something if you think that it happened in 1933, two years later. So today, it has to start with you today. Because when your success happens, what you practice in private, you're rewarded in public, does not happen in 2023. It happens in 2022. Just like it did with James Braddock. He took it on. He strategized today. So he can be ready and prepared for when the time period comes to use his left hand. And so what happens is I broke this down and I said, damn, this was a really good story. And I, and for those that really want to see this story, it's a, it's a movie, Cinderella man, love the movie. And so I remember watching this. And then I remember actually now reading the story this morning. If you see, like, literally I, I take notes on these, on this type of stuff. Because I want to bring something of value. I want to bring something that you guys could take away with. And I, and I took this and I said, how, how else can I relate it to today? So I'm going to take average people and I'm going to take successful people here. Average people, you know what they talk about? You know what 90% of the people, average people talk about? Anybody want to put it in the chat to take a guess? Don't be, it's okay if you, if we're, we could be mean to the, to the average people. I'm going to, I'm going to trigger some people today. I'm going to, I'm going to get some people upset with me today, but I, but I want you to tell me, what do you, what do you think average people talk about? Who wants to take a guess? Anybody put it in others, politics, the P word is right. Other people. Who else? Weather. Yep, they talk about weather. I don't know, I have my Facebook, so hopefully people on Facebook are, are enjoying it. But average people, 90% of the time, they talk about problems. Very good, Latrice, you nailed it. They talk about their problems. That's what they do. They talk about their problems. They complain. 90% of the conversation is about something that is going wrong. Successful people, 90% of their conversations are about solutions. They're about solutions and how I'm going to figure it out. And that's how the whole Friday figured out came into play is right here. Boom. There's the big thing. They figure it out. Friday solutions. I mean, solu uh, successful people talk about their solutions and opportunities. They talk about visions. They talk about dreams. They're like, hey, man, this is what we're thinking about. Dave Hanson and I were talking about something else on, on real estate. 
Chris talking about how we're going to do some lunch and learns. Sarah talking about how we're going to do some lunch and learns. Mike Castor, him and I brainstorming. Greg thinking about brainstorming what we could do, how we could build our business, property management, whatever it might be. That's what successful people do. They figure out solutions. They're not bitching and whining and complaining about things they can't control, i.e. the serenity prayer. So no matter what, successful people show up. Successful people show up. And I don't know if Karen's on here, but I had a conversation. What you have to be careful for is this. See, James Braddock, he, he, was, he was by himself quite a bit, right? Boxers have to be by themselves and they're trying to work and there's a lot of things going on and they have to fight through the distractions. But here's the thing. When you're going with successful people, when they show up, and this is not a victim thing, it's just a part of my life and part of my story this week. And Karen was there when I had to, when I had to teach this. On Tuesday, in, in Chris, I promise you, I didn't make you sick. I, I promise you that. I was like, oh boy, I hope I didn't get him sick. But I got sick Tuesday about four o'clock. Paul, I didn't get you sick either. I promise. I, I had no idea I was sick. But like at, at Tuesday afternoon, I, I got sick. Something happened. I started to sweat. The achiness came on to me. And I was just like, hey, Karen. I want Because Karen was there with me on, on Wednesday morning. So I slept for 13 hours. Of course, I called my mom. Mom, I'm not feeling good. Blah, blah, blah. Brock, you need to take it easy. See, when you tell people in your comfort zone, you tell family members you're sick, guess what they're going to tell you to do? You need to take it easy. You need to relax. You need to drink fluids. You got to go through all this stuff. Okay. I knew I had a coach at nine o'clock in, into the EXP world with a bunch of North Carolina real estate agents. I needed to show up. I was probably feeling 50% at the time. I knew I had to bring my entire A game to that event. And on... In that class on Wednesday, when I taught at nine o'clock, it was probably one of the best classes I ever taught because I had to freaking bring everything I possibly can. I had to be successful. I couldn't complain about being sick. I actually was during the middle of my speaking engagement, my fever broke and I just started profusely sweating. I'm like, oh boy, this is not going to be, I'm like drinking water. I'm like trying to hide it. But I was just like, you have to keep showing up. You have to show up every single day, just like James Breddick had to show up every single day. Thank you, Katie. Every single day, you have to show up and you got to figure a way around it. And James Braddock had to figure out a way out of the depression. I have broken hand. My family's falling apart. I don't, I can't box. I have no money. Can you imagine what it's like in the 1930s? So this morning, still not feeling all the best, still like, oh, gosh, I just got to get through it. And I had a couple people say to me, Brock, it's Friday. Like, why don't you just sleep in a little bit? Why don't you just take it easy? I'm like, what? It's Friday. I made it three days. <laughs> I made it three days not feeling good. I was, I'm like, I only have like 10 hours to make it through now. I'm in the home stretch now. Yeah, luckily my avatar wasn't sweating on stage. I know this doesn't show that. So here's the thing, guys. There's things that I hear across the board. Average versus successful people. People are making movement. People are strategizing right now. And there's going to be a lot of distractions. Okay, I'm going to conclude with this. And here's the thing I've realized. On this morning show, I have to be a little bit politically correct. I know you might say like, no, you don't, Brock. It's your show. You can do whatever you but. At the same token, I do. I have to recognize my audience. I have to see what's going on. There's a lot of moving parts that go into this to be able to build in, in law of attraction and everything else. But I'm getting ready to start my podcast. And I've been interviewing and I've been talking about this podcast. And I'm, I'm literally starting it next week. And I'm going to be 100% real and honest on this podcast. I don't have to filter what I what some of the things I say because what I'm hearing people talk about and what other agents and industries and lenders and insurance people and entrepreneurships out there, what they tell other people, I'm like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me that they said that to you? But if you want to be part of my podcast, if you want to listen into my podcast and me to be very real with you, it's going to be the new life of Brock Zevan, the real new life Brock Zevan's podcast. Put your email in the chat or in the Zoom and put your email with podcast next to it so I can make sure you get the link. 
so you can hear exactly what I really feel and think, just like it is today, and what's average and successful, and really what the grit is, what the grind looks like, fighting through when you're not feeling good, having conversations with people, and understanding what that's all about, getting other like-minded people on this show. And if that's for you, and if you want to be around high level people and you want to understand what that looks like, you got to put your email on here and you got to put podcast next to it, put it in the Facebook chat and also put it into the zoom chat. So that way we can get it. And so we can send it out to you. Thank you, Latrice, Amy, Stephanie. So make sure you put that on there guys. Just like James Reddick, things are going to take place in your life. You are going to have uncertainty. There's going to be something that's going to happen to you in the next 30 days. It's just called life. And you're going to get sick and something's going to happen. But you just got to fight through it. Just like James Braddock did. I loved his story. I strongly suggest if you want to go, it's on. You can get the Cinderella man. It's the movie. You'll be able to see it. Obviously, it's a movie type of thing. So you, there's a little bit of like a little bit more emotion than what I said to him. But when I look at this guy at 21 in top of the world, see, I thought I was in top of the world in 2015, but I was just a drunk. I was a mess. I was freaking broke as a joke. I didn't have, as my father would say, I didn't have a, a pot to piss in or a window to throw it out. But boy, oh boy, I thought I was 44 and two. And my life crashed before me. And I had to figure it out. And I had to get through this. And I love boxing stories. I love the Muhammad Ali's, the George Foreman's. Mike Tyson's story is kind of like all over the place. So he's, he's a unique individual in himself. But they had certain periods of his time where he had some challenges and he had to overcome them. You know, um, the one story where, where uh, Mike Tyson, he gets knocked out by, um, God, I can't even forget his name. His story is phenomenal, too. Why can't I think of him? The guy that knocked out Mike Tyson, he was like an 88 to 1 odd. Um, and his mother died like two days before the fight. Was it Holyfield? No, it wasn't Hol Holyfield. Tyson bit his ear. Uh, oh, that's right. I forgot who it was. If anybody remembers who it was, I can't, I can't remember. I'm going to find out really quickly because uh, Mike Tyson got knocked out by white now it's not even pulling up on zoom i'll figure it out i will figure it out um uh, buster, buster douglas. douglas buster douglas buster yes. douglas buster douglas man he's got a freaking phenomenal story too his 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 mother died a couple days before the fight and his mother on his death on her deathbed said buster you're gonna beat him and Buster Douglas got knocked out that, that fight. He got knocked out early in the rounds. And he remembers the vision of his mother on his bed. Man, that gets me teared up a little bit just thinking of that energy that he had. He's like, no, I'm not freaking losing your ass, bud. I'm getting back up. How many of you are going to get back up right now? How many of you are going to be the James Braddock? How many of you are the Buster Douglas right now? Because things might not be going your way. Things not be lined up right now. Chris is getting his boxing gear on right now. He's getting his boxing movement on. Guys, today's the day that you start your strategy today. Today's the day you go look at some of these individual, individual people and how they overcame hardship. I promise you, every single person that has a conversation, every single person that, that, that has a success story, there's a hardship right before it. It's just the way life is. And if you're going through a hardship right now, you have a chance to be able to strategize and to be able to work, but you got to be around like-minded people. You got to be around high-level people. It's the only way to stay in cahoots and you got to have a purpose and you got to have a why. So for those of you all on this Facebook page and for all on the Zoom, make sure you get your email on here, put podcast next to it. So that way we can get you lined up. It is going to be raw. It's going to be real. It's going to be really, I'm kind of looking forward to it. I'm excited about it because sometimes I really want to say what I want to say and I can't, uh, but that I can be a little bit more open. Guys, I want to wish you all a very, very happy weekend. Robin's boxing over there. I got a couple of you boxing. Um, if anybody's interested in any of my coaching programs or anything at all, you could check out bz3enterprises.com. It is on the chats, on the Zoom chat, as well as on the Facebook chat. Take a look at it. We got about six or seven different programs we're running right now. Guys, I appreciate you all. 
If you like this podcast or podcast, I got podcasts in my mind. If you like this show this morning, please give it a thumbs up. Please give us a heart. Sometimes it's hard for me to be able to feel everybody that's that's on here. But if you loved it, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up on the uh, on the show in the Zoom world. Give us hearts and loves and comments in the Facebook world. We're just so very excited to be able to have this opportunity today to be able to come to you guys. We appreciate you all. Thank you so much, Amy and Latrice and Katie and Karen and Stephanie and Chris and Brent and Amy and Claudia and Conrad and Donna and Edwin. Uh, Glenn's on here. So just going through Sandy. I appreciate you all out here, guys. Thank you so much for being here. Have a phenomenal weekend. Be safe out there. I got my kids this weekend, so it's going to be, we're back to being a wild one. So, all right, guys, have a good one. We'll see you Monday, 815, right back here. Love you all. God bless. We'll see you.